Okay. Heel that, lip sheet, your helmet is on too tight. The front door, go to the front door and answer it. Come in, come in, let me see. You must be... Margaret LaRue. Please meet you, Margaret. Hi, Margaret LaRue. That's right. Are the cameramen here? No cameramen, just Jorge and me. What about the reporters in the big check? Oh no, we don't want, we don't know nothing about that. We don't want no cameramen, no TV newsman. No, no, the telegram said I was a safe six when I come to Cable Car Cliff. This is Cable Car Cliff. Oh yeah, you come right up on the cable car? This is the place. I don't understand. Right here, all right here in the center of everything explained. Publishers mail in sweep six? Oh no, we don't know nothing about that. Would you mind, I'm not wearing my contacts. I don't mind, to yourself. No, I mean, would you mind reading the information to me? It says... Welcome to Cable Car Cliff. Please remain in your room to seven, at which time we will meet here in the main dining room for a masquerade party. You'll find your mask in your room. Okay. What about the rest of my things? My luggage? Oh no, all the luggage will be coming up on the last car. You will get it after the last guest arrives. See you at seven. Oh no, Helen and Hawaii not invited to party. Oh, well, try to have a good time anyway. <laughs> about a gallon of M&M's, but no brown ones. Um, I think there's been a slight change of plans. A change of plans? You mean tell me I wrote up in that, cable, that beat up cable car of this windblown out for nothing? You know, people don't treat Paul Wesley like this. No one treats Paul like this. You're not Paul. Uh, 
Uh, my instructions say I give you envelope. Keep lips in. Ourselves. I suggest we take off our masks. One, two, three. What 
happened in here? We're, we're hugging. I want some answers and I want them now. Tell him. We're hugging. It's so bizarre. Why? We're married. We can hug if we want to. No, I mean all of us in, together again in the strange house. It can't be a coincidence. Oh, really? York, Emily is right. Let's be logical. This is no coincidence. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to get us together again. My guess we were, is we were all brought here under false pretenses. We were told we'd won a second honeymoon. I was told I'd won Publishers Million Sweepstakes. I was supposed to be quizzing a movie deal. I was hired as head of security. I was invited to cut a record. I'm here because I'm supposed to be meeting a man. I'm here because I'm supposed to be meeting someone special from my past. Me? Is it me? No, it's Heath. So you're the special someone I'm supposed to meet. Obviously, Heath and Mr. Chris are the only two that were brought here not under false pretenses. Meaning what, Inspector? Meaning, meaning someone lied to us, and I want to know why. What about Hug and Jorge? They were on the table. They're what? dead. I, I think, and we should grill them. <gasps> they left. They left. They left. They left. I have a grill. They left. Okay. They what? I saw them board the cable car, and they left. Put your pan away. Quick, we gotta stop them. Let's go, Matthew. Again? I don't think they got there Motive? There's a nutball on the loose. 
And he, I'm pretty sure he doesn't need a motive. If we are in jeopardy, then the only way we may be able to save ourselves is if we figure out what this nut has in mind. I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we play name the motive? I'll go first. Well, Geraldo, I think it's a schizophrenic serial killer who is hopelessly addicted to romance novels, loves to make macaroons, is guilty of being in love with his cousin, and wants to join the circus. You know, you may have something there. I think it's all fun, Mr. Weave, who entertain us so well with his last poll, do you? Too obvious. Besides, why would he want to do that? Revenge! For what reason? Like Emily said, maybe he doesn't need a reason. Maybe it's someone we all met who doesn't like us? I don't know, that's never happened to me. Who wants to see me, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't expect to be a victim of gratuitous violence today. Now what? Well, I agree with Matthew. Grief is too obvious. He could have killed us last time. Who do you think it is, Doctor? Maybe Helga and Jorge. They're dead. Or it would seem. Or it would seem that they weren't on the gateful car. What if they only appeared to be on it? Your that would be explain everything. That explains nothing, Inspector. What do you say, Mr. Charisma? Whether Helga and whether Helga and Jorge or Jed or not makes no difference. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. We're assuming we're all marked for murder, but we have no proof of that. Nothing has happened. You don't consider the cable car blowing up as something happening. It doesn't mean the explosion was intentional. Right, cable cars blow up on themselves all the time. Matthew's right, we're assuming the worst. Let's focus on the positive instead of dwelling on the negative. See the glass is half empty instead of half full. See the donut instead of the hole? Let's we get it. We, we get it. Heath, we get it. I say we return to our rooms, freshen up, and be here in ten minutes. York can entertain us, and Mims and Flayhorn can serve us refreshments. Um, oh no, no. We're not hired help this time. It'll be like old times. But we've come to know you and love you as Clayton and Mims. Think of it as a rule. But well, we're the benders! Nobody cables. Honestly. <laughs> Mims, why don't you serve the soup? You go get the soup, and I'll go in search of something to use as a serving card. What do you think would be good for dinner? Roast pig? Uh -huh. I don't Everybody else, remain where they are. 
Why are you looking at me? I didn't try to do it. But you're the one who saw him. I want to get you food. You could have been the murderer and killed him when we didn't see you. Wow. Presley son. Guys, I swear, he did see G. Reed. He's my husband. Did you see G. Reed? Well, I mean, no. Exactly. Has everybody, has anybody ever seen him before? No. No. Has anyone ever seen like a six foot man dressed as a gorilla? Whatever possessed me to come to this violent place. Romance, passion, kissy face. Oh, well, well, Inspector. Very funny, Clayhorn. There was the room was empty. You mean someone stole the brooms and mops? No, Miss Plain. I mean there was no body in the room. Corpus Elgato. I'm telling you, he was in there. <coughs> well, I don't understand. I don't understand this either, Inspector. Neither do we. Hey. Perhaps you would care to explain yourself. All right. I went in there in search of a serving cart. In there, I found G. Reef on said serving cart, dressed as a gorilla. That's all she wrote. Well, if Clay were to tell the truth, a man dressed in a monkey costume shouldn't be hard to find. You just looked. Or were there any signs of physical abuse, Doctor? No. Were there any signs of physical abuse? Um, bruises, alleys? No, I didn't see any contusions or slices or injuries. You couldn't tell if it had been beaten, stabbed, slice, um, bludgeoned, tumbled, kicked, stabbed, shot, sliced, or diced. How many times do I have to tell you this? He was in a monkey costume! This is kind of too far. I'm placing you under the rest. What's the charge? For the murder of Mr. Reef. Oh, excuse me, but you can't do that. Yeah, you can charge him with murdering someone none of us has ever seen. If Clayton had ruled a G Wee, why would he even bring it up in the first place? Clearly, Clayton was no mood. Thank you, Miss Big. Are you saying he's just a big fibber? No, he's a nut. Clayhorn says. Matthew is right. The only thing Clayhorn can be charged with is fibbing. The only way to know, um, to know the truth is by searching the house. If Clayhorn is distilling it's the truth, the man dressed as a monkey should be hard to find. service for freshmen's. No. But, how about some entertainment? I don't know what to say! Don't say anything. I was talking to York. Oh. Please, Presley. What can you sing? I don't think I really could. Oh, I love that song! Please. Well, if you insist. Staring into the sun that tries to blind our eyes. Oh, we're dancing forever under the beautiful.
Swallow the skies. Somewhere over the ocean, a spark tries to ignite. I'm stuck in my hometown, waiting for your reply. All I see is the darkness, there's no sound, only silence. You could change everything tonight. This is our chance to do something right.
shouldn't Dr. Prince examine the body? Doctor? Inspector? That would be your job. You can go. I, I had no idea Margaret was this bad. How did she die, Doctor? Her heart stopped beating and she stopped breathing. <laughs> Doctor, we're waiting. Her heart stopped beating and she stopped breathing. Very good. At this point in the evening, I, I believe it might be instructive to attempt to sort out the facts. So there's nothing to sort out, Mr. Cool, is there? What we know is two, maybe three people dead. Um, we, I don't really care who can press we or Margaret or quite anticipating corpse. Because I think I'll be dead before I find out anyway. So the only thing that I'm worried about is getting out of here. Get it? Get it? Got it? Good. Miss Biggs is right. Someone has to make it out of here. There are two skis outside. Two pairs of keys, skis outside. I'll take a pair and I'll get off the mountain and get us some help. <laughs> are you crazy, Inspector? There's a blizzard out there. There are hidden holes, sheets of clear ice. Avalanche dangers? It would be certain that. Who wants to go with me? Okay, we'll draw straws. Whoever draws the shortest straw wins. Ready? Go! Dr. Prince drew the shortest straw. Aww. Yes. Come on, Dr. Prince. May the force be with you, Inspector? Doctor? The killer doesn't get us, the mountain will certainly well. Grab a coat. Now what? I suggest we review our options. What? What's wrong with you? Is that all you can say? Is let's review this, let's review that. Can you think of anything original? What are you, a history teacher? How can you stand this man? What are you, a bore? You're a bore. Can you think of anything original except for redundancy after redundancy? And to think I had a thing for you, I must have been crazy. Let me put into words I think you'll understand. <gasps> Until we hear from the inspector, I suggest we return to our rooms and lock ourselves inside. Oh, Jack, you're so romantic. I know. Matthew alive. I know, and I keep thinking about the dreadful moment. 
Well, you will see when he, you I know. know. Well, some of us will wonder if you shot Matthew. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> that took a while to think about it. You shot him. Where? I'm Dr. Spencer Miles. I can see him. Dr. Prince! Who's the killer? Miles. What? He tried to kill me with an avalanche. Kill you? How? He kept yodeling. <laughs> How is that possible? Yeah. Yodeling. I told him to stop, but he wouldn't. He kept on and on and on until the whole mountain collapsed on the spoke. So, you're lucky to be alive. But what about Miles? Huh? Miles, he disappeared. Is he dead? He might, might he, wait, no. Miles must have come back here and shot Matthew. He's the only one with the gun. Matthew's dead? Shot. Yeah. Seriously? 
Really? Ah! Oh no. It's horrible! What happened? How about she for show up an arrow? Will! At the end of the hall! No, where was he hit? Is he dead? Of course he's dead! He's hanging on the wall! We have to check Dr. Prince. Diamond.
Sarah, do you believe me? No, but it doesn't matter. You know the part of the script that I like best? The part about a second.